Hello everyone, welcome to the Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen. Today we'll talk about part two of the epithalamus. As we talked about in part one, the epithalamus is mostly composed of two parts. The habinulus nucleus, which is a little bit anterior and superior and lateral to the pineal gland right here. And the focus of this video is all about the pineal gland. The pineal gland is located in the quadrigeminal cistern right around here. And it is attached to two structures, superiorly or dorsally, it is known as the habinular commissure that we talked about in part one. And inferiorly or ventrally, it is connected to the posterior commissure as denoted here. I just wanted to digress a little bit and talk about an important concept, which is the ACPC line. If you have a mid-sagittal scan of the brain, you can easily identify on the MRI scan the anterior commissure right here and the posterior commissure right there. And so if you draw a line that goes kind of between the two places, the two structures, what you get is the ACPC line. And this has basically been adopted as the convenient standard for MRI scans by the neuroimaging community. And in most instances, is the reference plane for axial imaging in everyday scanning. Now the creation of this line has pretty much two advantages. The creation of the standard imaging plane makes it easier to perform, perform comparisons between scans. It also follows, this line also follows a path essentially parallel to the hypothalamus sulcus and thereby dividing the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Now we all know that pineal gland is responsible for controlling the circadian rhythms. Now this is because the major component in the pineal gland is uh, our pineocytes, which are atrophied neurosensory photoreceptors. And this is the basis of a disease called trilateral retinoblastomas, which is a malignant uh, primitive neuroectodermal tumor occurring in patients with bilateral retinoblastomas plus a pineoloblastoma. And it is so because, it is named so because of it, their histological similarities. And obviously the other components of the pineal glands includes glial cells and sympathetic nerve endings. The pineal gland makes different substances. And typically the first thing that comes to mind is the melatonin. This is actually produced by pineocytes. The pineocytes first make serotonin that then converts it into melatonin and the chemical reactions of which uh, this happens is not very important but I just wanted to put this picture or, uh, here to show the similarities between the two products. Melatonin obviously has produced at its highest amount in the dark, which facilitates sleep. Pineulocyte also produces hormones such as TSH, LH releasing hormones, and somatostatins. And somatostatins, as we know, inhibits the growth hormones. And so if the pineulocytes over secretes these hormones, it'll delay puberty because of the somatostatin effects. And if it hypo 
produce these hormones, it'll lead to precocious puberty. The other part of the pineal gland has terminating sympathetic neurons, which makes norepinephrines. And these neurons typically are involved in the inhibition of the pineal gland. So here's a pathway of how light inhibits the pineal gland. Light first enters the retina that then transmits the signal via the optic nerves into the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus. This then gets transmitted into the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus. I have a picture of it right here. First, the pathway or the bundle of the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus originates in the hypothalamic region and it travels all the way down into the spinal cord into the intermediolateral cell columns of C8 and T1 level, which has the preganglionic sympathetic neurons, and they're listed right here. And these are the intermediolateral cell columns of the sympathetic uh, pathway. These cells then travel out of the spine into the superior cervical ganglion which is the postganglionic neuron of the sympathetic chain. It then travels up into, back into the brain via the carotid artery and goes into the sympathetic nerve endings in the pineal gland and inhibits the pineal gland. Here's another representation of the same pathway. Light enters the retina, goes into the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus that then travels into the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus down the spine into the intermedial lateral column of around C8 and T1 level that then travels into the cervical ganglion and eventually to the superior cervical ganglion into the internal carotid artery plexus and back into the brain and then uh, to the nerve endings of the pineal gland and thus inhibiting the pineal gland. So if you damage both the suprachiasmatic nuclei of the hypothalamus within the pathway of the pineal gland pathway, then it's quite intuitive that you will have problems with circadian rhythms and in the forms of eating and drinking. And also, the reproductive cycle can be affected. Now, recall that the pineal gland also secretes LH-releasing hormones, which messes with the estrogen cycles. Here are my references. I hope you find this helpful. We'll see you next time.